So you're just carrying around a big old bag of mosquitoes. Mosquito assassins. Wow. These are the predators. These are bike control ninjas. This is not just a random lady walking around with a bag of mosquitoes, folks. This happens to be Anita Schiller with the uh, Harris County Precinct 4 Biological Control Initiative. Um, that's a lot of words for basically you help other bugs fight other bugs. Pretty much. Yeah. That's a lot of words. Yeah. And I'm the cheerleader. We are inside the Cockerel Butterfly Center, and you are the one that's heading up the Mosquito Assassins program. It's been here for a few months now, mm -hmm. and your job is to find ways for these mosquitoes to kill the bad mosquitoes, correct? Yes, yes. So there's some exotic pests, some stowaways yes. that happen to find their way into this pyramid, into this conservatory. Uh -huh. and I didn't bring any in, I promise. Uh, That's not, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't me either, but we yeah. found them, <laughs> and visitors said that they were here. Yeah. Um, and so, of course, the problem is that we can't do anything about them. We can't mm -hmm. use pesticides to kill these mosquitoes because then the, mos the butterflies would die as well, right? So they're very limited in the ways to reduce the mosquito load and we're using these assassin, uh, mosquito assassins to help get rid of these exotic pests. Now how does this work? I mean, these guys, they look a little bit beefier than your regular mosquitoes out there, the ones that we're always constantly hating. Yeah, the buddy smear mosquitoes. Yeah, so they look a lot beefier, they look they look like they're armed, quite honestly. So <laughs> how, does, how, does, how does the program work? I've uh, always wondered, I mean, mosquito assassins, it obviously, it sounds really cool. It sounds like, you know, there's like, you know, mosquitoes with like, you know, rifles and stuff. And it's very, you oh, know. Oh, no, it's ninja stars. Very ninja, okay, ninja, ninja stars. stars. Very, you know, very, very scary. How does it work? If you explain to somebody really quick, what's the elevator pitch on the mosquito the assassin program? The elevator pitch is that when they're this beefy size, mm -hmm. They're really just hippies. Okay. They're nectar feeding, love making with that. hippies. Okay. They're you know flying around flower power. Got it. Um, but their offspring, their juveniles, their babies, their progeny are is the yeah the okay. ones with the fangs, the okay. the meat eaters so to speak. Um, so we're trying to capitalize on their offspring to do the dirty work for us to okay. get infiltrate the enemies habitat Got it. and get rid of the enemy from within which just happens to be inside the cockroach butterfly yeah, center because the, this is a nice contained tank area vermilliates. okay so there's some we call them the jargon word technical word is tank bromeliads habitat or mm -hmm. um containers okay uh anything that holds rainwater rainwater fills there's no fish in there Got it. Uh, that's where mosquitoes love to be. Yeah, that's where the exotic species, the domestic species, like to hang out. Got so it. outside of this conservatory, we would refer to them as domestic mosquitoes or paradomestic mosquitoes, backyard mosquitoes. Okay. The that's ones that the are ones these are after. No, okay. not just the yeah. backyard ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which literally translates into backyards is human habitat, oh. which means it's the ones that we are proliferating. Got it. By our residences having containers out and about, like dog bowls, kitty poles, um, I don't know, water meters, clogged rain gutters, mm -hmm. bird baths that we forget to Old clean. Old pickup trucks. Tires. Tires. You, know, you mean to replace those snow tires that you had in Colorado? Yeah, that yeah. That they're real st really still sitting in your backyard waiting to be put on? Get those rid of all ones, that. Those are the ones that are breeding the mosquito problems, the backyard mosquitoes that are biting you during the day. Yeah. So these mosquito assassins will also lay their eggs in those exact same spaces. Okay. And sort of infiltrate, like you said. Infiltrate and kill from within. Got it. Wow, that is very dark for, <laughs> it <is>. for <laughs> inside the CBC. So eventually, will this program... If it does well in here, will it be used throughout Harris County and beyond? That is the aim. Okay. So this, the CBC project itself is just one phase of a multi-year study, efficacy study, to judge and evaluate the feasibility of using them in large scale. Okay, so a lot more than this. Uh, yeah, this is just Millions small... and millions of them, I would assume, at that point mm -hmm. on that large scale. Right. Okay. So part of what we have to figure out is an application rate, a dosage. Um, and for that dosage ratio to be measured is we have to first of all know how big is the infection rate. If, if I use clinical terms, then you would use infection rates, uh, meaning how big is the population of the pest mosquitoes, the target mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. So we have to do a baseline first to see how many bad pest mosquitoes, backyard mosquitoes are in an area, and then calculate a dosage rate, an application rate of what we need for assassins 
to infiltrate and reduce those numbers. Wow. So this particular study here will help us determine application rate and application efficacy. How many of these good bugs does it take to get rid of these pest mosquitoes? But we'll probably never really be completely rid of the pest mosquitoes, but we can do our best job. Yes, so okay. um, it boils down to personal responsibility. Everybody has a role to play in this. Everybody that owns property, a piece of land or a house. Get rid um, of the standing water. Yep, Got that's it. one thing. Um, and we have to learn to differentiate the different mosquitoes as to what constitutes a public health threat, a serious problem, and what is just kind of a nuisance. Annoying. An, yeah, yeah, like an annoying bug that really doesn't have a, a particular threat to you. Yep. So a lot of times the bugs, the mosquitoes out in the forest, they're you know they're they're more or less a nuisance yeah. we have a lot of biting mosquitoes that are nuisances but the ones that are the biggest threat to the health of harris county residents are the southern house mosquitoes that can transmit west nile virus yes and then a couple of newer bugs newer mosquito species um the backyard mosquitoes yellow fever mosquitoes and uh, asian tiger mosquitoes they're a little bit newer to the area and they lack that natural predator and that's where these guys and come in. And that's what we're trying to <laughs> help out with. So we're taking the natural predator from the environment where they still are found, um, which uh, means that they were once abundant in the area, yep. but through habitat development and habitat loss, they're kind of getting pushed out to the outskirts. So we're reproducing them in the lab in a factory setting and then putting them back where they once were. Got it. All right, now we are joined by Miss Eleanor, and I am going to put my arm inside this bag of uh, mosquito assassins. Mosquito assassins, okay. that's right. How do I do this? So we're going to open the cage and try not to release them all at okay. once. Greg is going to put his hand in there. I'm acting okay. like this is a daredevil move. Be brave. <laughs> doesn't seem like they're trying to grab me. They don't find me as a threat. No, no threat, and you don't. Your hand doesn't look like a flower or okay. a tree. Uh, probably doesn't smell like one no. either, unless you put sunflower perfume on wow. you this morning. Um, they definitely are. When you look at them up close, they definitely are a lot beefier than your regular, average annoying mosquito. Yeah. So in the cage, they're they're dark looking. They're kind of black, but under sunlight. The iridescent blue and gold and purple. Oh, so they're actually pretty. They're very the pretty. Okay. They're very pretty. Unfortunately, it really takes the sunlight to hit them just right for you to see those colors. Got it. Uh, a lot like the morpho butterflies that are flying around they're in around here. Around over here. Yeah. We, none of them have made a cameo yet. Usually, when we're shooting in here, something usually just comes yeah, up and just goes like, yeah, yeah, or yeah. It lands on my head. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, thank you very much. This is awesome. Thank you, Miss Eleanor. There you go. Miss <laughs> Eleanor is she's amazing. She's one of our she's, uh, local one of, heroes. She's, I guess, what would you call? I guess you're one of the butterfly center volunteers. Don't you're always running around and hanging out. Yeah. yeah. This is my my home. She knows places. everything. She knows everything yeah, about right. this place. <laughs> everything. Um, so you. you got it. You got it. So the cool thing is uh, Anita Schiller here is going to be here at the museum on August 20th at 7 p.m. That's a Tuesday. Yes. And you're gonna be holding forth, talking a little bit about this kind of stuff here, but in front of a bunch more people and there's gonna be a big screen and it's a lecture thing and it's the whole a, It's deal. a lecture thing, but I promise I'll make it fun okay. and interesting. Uh, we're gonna be playing Sherlock Holmes a little bit, trying to determine and answer the X factors about the weird, mysterious things that go on in here. Got it.